Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Data Cloud Now. I'm currently in Stockholm, where I'm delighted to be joined by Krister Jonas, Director of Ad Data Capabilities at Shipstead. Krister, such a pleasure to have you here today. It's such a pleasure to be here. Shipstead began as a small publishing company in 1839 and has since grown into a Nordic family of digital brands. A lot has changed over the years, but your passion for driving change remains. What trends are you noticing across the media landscape, and how is your data strategy positioning the business for success in the years to come? So, so I think we see quite a lot of trends, and, and, and I would say we're part of the trends as well. So, so one of the things is that we used to print the paper, right? right. You, and then we used to produce a website. And, and I think we're moving more and more towards seeing that not only us, but also other media companies becoming an interface or a service that the user access different kinds of content for, right? You, you see this with, with YouTube, you log in, you get different offerings. You don't think if it's an app or if it's on a phone or a desktop, you see that with Spotify, Netflix, and all the others. And, and we are now a media company with a separate brand offering this. So we already have the first product. We have an everything product, so you can buy access to everything. So I think we'll not, both from an advertising and subscription perspective, we'll see that you will be one party to the user and they'll they have a bundle with us and i think that that trend of 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 getting an offering of content from a news organization or media organization is, is one thing that we see and we're not the only organization to that would we recently hired the chief revenue officer or well we actually pr promoted the ad guy and that's because we see more and more synergies and, and overlap between the issues that faces digital subscription and, and digital advertising. Because you're doing, an ad, a subscriber might be more valuable to advertiser, but subscribers might want less ads or get less ads. So, so just thinking and crossing those two together becomes more important to succeed as a media company. I mean, the internet's been here for a while. I think it's 20 or 30 years, depending. I mean, if you're an ARPANET dude, you know that it's been here for since the 70s, but it's, it's still, been here for a while and you have companies doing uh, retailing, you're doing loyalty programs on the net, generating vast amounts of data, vast expansive relationships with their clients and they have this rich data that they use in all their channels, like in their app, in their websites and they want to use that offsite as well and they want to share the usage of that data with third parties uh, or other companies and so we see this retail media, retail media offsite part really trending and being important for us to be a part of, because that's where a lot of the funding that we're getting will be coming from. Great perspective, Christer. Now I want to dive into the insights. Specifically, what potential do you see for Shipstead and advertisers to collaborate on each other's data in Snowflake? And how does this alignment help position the business for the future to come? The two basic capabilities that we and advertisers share or that we need to share is activation of data. So you have a cohort of loyal users and you want to present them with the messaging. You can do that with matching of data across the different. And I think, but what really is exciting is when you get data flowing back, right? Because when you had that cohort of users, for example, getting a specific message within the ships that ecosystem, then did they, those guys actually buy more? Did they buy higher margin products? Getting that analytics feedback loop, I mean, those two kind, uh, capabilities are the basis for all use cases that we see together uh, with advertisers. And I think we did this case and we presented here earlier today. And, and I think there's a lot of things that goes into building those kind of things. But the good thing is with Snowflake, at least the technical part is easy. And, and then everything else, uh, you have time to fix that. Great to hear uh, ease of use and, and Snowflake very much being at the core of that. Thank you for that perspective. I'd like to take a look at the business as a, a whole for the moment. Shipstead recently became two companies. How does this position the business for long-term success and what was the rationale for splitting into two? So I, I, I think long-term, and, and, and this is also part of the rationale, I guess, but it's, it's, we're just going to be much more focused. And the way that the media landscape, I mean, we talked about the trends, right? right? And the way that changes, you really have to do things very fast because right. you're, and, and being a very focused media only advertising subscription based company will allow us to do that. That's, that's the belief, right? And, and why it happened? I mean, that's, it's really two part question. Why did it happen now? 
and and why did it happen at all right and and the why now was is, is more like a practical thing that our owner or i mean technically we split out but where the remaining ships and complicated stuff right but the company that no no owns uh, media got a payout because ships that sold classified business and they suddenly had the resources so that they could buy out the media and so that was more like it just happened because they had the opportunity and and the reason it had i think it had to happen because like ships there was a company with lots of different areas and the financial logic of the media business, the margins, the, 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 the kind of investment cases, your role in society, all of those didn't match with the rest. So the logical separation of the two. Very logical. And the financial market, I mean, they actually valued the media business at zero. So it was bought for six billion arc, I think it was, and the share price went up. Six billion that day, the ship's the share price. Because no, everyone was like, oh, the media business is just there. It's legacy. We don't invest in it. We don't know. I mean, there's, there was usually one slide on the quarterly report about media, and then no one asked any questions. So it never, like, it didn't really interest investors, unfortunately, you might say, but that's, that's for a different conversation. So it, it just really had to, to happen. And I mean, if you look at the historic perspective, media businesses haven't really been in the capital markets that much. Like if you go 150 years back, there was this period in the 80s, 90s, where everyone was on the stock exchange because they were printing money because they were the Google and Amazons of the day. They owned the attention, right? But after and before, it's, it's just a very special business. It's family owned, it's trust owned, it's legacy based. Yeah. So. Well, thank you, thank you for that. And I, and I realized uh, we, we've covered a lot here, Christopher. But as you look out on the coming months, what's your top priority and how can the audience stay informed on all things Shibsden? My team and the entire company really is the top priority is get out from the, like the splitting, complete that. We have just, we're still cooperating with the old Shibsden, the rest of Shibsden on ads, just getting that practicalities done renaming stuff in your CRM system, changing people's right. That's a lot of work that we need to do. So that's part one. Part two is actually preparing for the new lean every day. And that's getting rid of the stuff you don't need, cleaning up, just becoming a sort of a, call it a media machine that moves really fast. And then the third one, and this is where you guys come in, is that we want to stay ahead on the retail media game. And, and we are ahead and that's where we want to stay. Well, Christopher, thank you so much for joining me here at Snowflake World Tour in Stockholm. The energy and excitement yeah, is it, uh, all around us here. Yeah, it's been a really great day. Such a pleasure. Looking forward to seeing what comes next. And for the audience watching, I'm Ryan Green. Thank you so much for joining us on Data Cloud Now here in Stockholm. We'll see you soon.